So today we're going to look at this whole idea of shadow casting, which is just basically saying that uh, we're casting a shadow with whatever light source. And you can do a lot of interesting things with this. I think I'm sure if you look at a few of the maps, maybe going through a map campaign or something like that, you will notice that a lot of these maps, especially the very uh, detailed, very professional ones, uh, use a lot of these sorts of high detail shadows to emulate a sort of atmosphere mood or just spice up a, a map a little. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is make a room out of a primitive shape, whatever you want. I'm making a cube of 1,024 units squared and a 256 height. Now, what you're go gonna wanna do is set a sort of uh, space of separation. Again, it's really whatever you want and it sort of modifies the shape as well. Not so much though, but um, just a little bit if you, uh, you know, play with it. I'm gonna, uh, have a space of 32 units here okay and this is just gonna be where the light comes from okay so now that you have that uh, what you're w gonna want to do is go ahead and make your shape so if you're making something that is additive of course you know you get the space as the height and uh, set a 256 squared or whatever your your area is for making it and then subtract it and then go ahead and add it but I'm gonna make a subtractive one so what I'm gonna do is go here and go ahead and make my shape and I'm just gonna make a really basic shape in the 2d editor just to show you uh, you know what exactly this uh, shadow cast is so go ahead and uh, make your shape Okay, so now that you have your shape finished, what you're gonna do is add a light. And this light is just gonna be the shadow cast. Now there's obviously multiple uh, methods to this, as in you can probably use multiple lights on the same figure to cast it in different ways, you know, and be a little bit artistic. But again, for the sake of simplicity, all we're doing is making a simple light. And this light is gonna be a little bit dramatic. So generally for dramatic lights, what you're gonna need is a non-incident slide effect with a high brightness. Now, of course, you can make a, a soft light and maybe a low brightness to be a little bit more subtle or anything, but that's whatever you want. Uh, for the sake of showing the effect itself, I'm gonna use a high brightness and a non-incident light effect. And you can sort of play with your radius as well. It sort of uh, modifies the size of the figure being cast. Okay, I'm gonna make a radius of 72 for this light. So once you have uh, all that, go ahead and uh, rebuild all. And uh, as you notice, y you can actually see a, a fairly rough shape of uh, what the figure is, right? The issue obviously with this is that you might want it to be sharper or something of that sort. And that's easily done by doing high shadow detail. This is one of the two things you might wanna do for uh, more complex figures, especially. Now, once I rebuild lighting, as you can see, it's a lot, uh, a lot more detailed, there's a lot more contrast, and it's not as dirty. It's uh, a lot sharper. So there is actually another thing that uh, is behind this. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna use a, a different texture just to show you. I'm just gonna use this one, I guess. Export a texture, the texture that you want uh, this light to be cast on, okay? And then re-import it. So I'm gonna put it in my level, put in whatever texture pack you want, your custom texture pack or my level. And um, there's a little property on uh, all textures, and it's called draw scale. 
And what this does is if I set it to whatever number I'm setting it to for right now, what's going to happen is basically when you apply this texture to any surface, it's going to magnify it by the scale that you set it to. So it's going to be four times as large as its original actual size when I apply it somewhere. So for instance, that's obviously pretty huge. So what you want to do now is you want to uh, reduce it uh, by a simple scaling. I'm going to reduce mine to 0 0.25 because of course that reduces it uh, back to 1. Okay. And I'm going to rebuild lighting. Now what you might notice here is that it's a lot sharper, very sharp. Uh, and generally speaking, uh, for something like this, this might not necessarily be the effect you want, as in, you know, especially for realistic lighting, this is not necessarily uh, what you might see, something like it. So again, what you would have to do is play with the figure and whatnot to sort of cast this light, cast whatever sort of shadow you want to what extent, etc. You know, so you can rebuild it and everything, make it smaller. Do be mindful though of uh, you know the texture distance, the distance the player is looking at the texture, etc. Because all of that really comes into play when um, applying these textures, these detailed shadows. Okay, so that's your basic um, light and shadow cast. You know we have a simple light right on top of it. You can move it, you know, to make sort of a different effect. It's whatever you want. But again, high shadow detail and a draw scale, a scaled uh, texture is what generally make a um, very sharp shadow. And again, you can play with that. You can return it, even try to, you know, make it a dirty sort of really dirty shadow by uh, making it extremely low detail by setting it to both low and high detail at the same time, or maybe something in between. That's again, it's what you want. So like I said before, you can get pretty detailed with these sorts of shadows and shadow cast and whatnot. Uh, for instance, one thing I like to do is get a texture, something that you can really write on, uh, so to speak. Uh, something from ancient, a good example would be something maybe uh, like the cheese or an alley door or uh, had it here somewhere, this uh, eagle looking shape. Okay, and what you obviously do is just uh, put the texture on the 2D editor and then um, shape it according to this. You know, And of course, I'm just uh, being rough, but of course you can uh, reduce the unit size and whatnot, unit grid. Uh, for, for extremely detailed textures, obviously, you'd want to do something with uh, very small unit grid, maybe even, or usually even, I'd say, uh, one unit, okay, and again, you just uh, sort of shape it, and it comes out to be whatever, okay, so, this is one of the more complex ones uh, that you've seen before, and this is made out of, like, uh, maybe 15, uh, 16, brushes okay but it makes a really nice uh, sort of shadow cast as you can see there and of course you mix it with all kinds of lighting and whatnot and uh, you get a, an interesting effect so that's another thing you can do okay so what I've done here is basically I've taken a texture that's draw scale 4 okay so uh, let me just show you as and there's really nothing different between this one and the other thing that we did. It's just modified by a scale of 4. Now mind you, this is a detailed texture. It's a specular version of it, but it is a high detail texture. So uh, there might be some difference in that. But other than that, you know, again, it's just a draw scale of 4. So that's here. And what I've done is I've created a chain reaction trigger system. Now forget about all of these, these are just references. Uh, basically it's just a geometrical sort of pattern that you use to uh, make a certain, you know, 
impression on this texture. Now, uh, you know, like I said before, before uh, doing anything else, there are uh, rather complex texture patterns, or excuse me, brush patterns, as you can see here. Um, this is one of them, okay? So this uh, particular one is made out of, I think, like 20 brushes or something like that. But it makes a very, very interesting uh, look, you know? It's, uh, again, using a high detail texture and uh, just uh, putting it from there. Okay, so other than that, there's uh, nothing particularly new about this, um, except for this. So again, what this is, is basically just a chain reaction. Uh, ignoring the geometrical pattern and wh whatnot, um, what it is, is a set of triggered lights because you cannot necessarily use an attach mover to uh, you know, cast shadow in a certain way and, and just uh, let it sort of uh, glide along as if something above it's moving, sort of making it like a moving shadow. You can't necessarily do that in Unreal Engine 1 unless you do something like this, okay? And I'm sure there's, you know, some scripting thing that you can do uh, using a, a four do while loop, something like that, and uh, set off a chain reaction in this manner. Uh, I just did it like this. So, what you do is, or what I did, is again, all these are triggered lights and they're set in order, okay? From start to finish, okay? And once this is triggered, all of the lights are going to trigger uh, at a certain time. Now, the only problem with this is that if you want it to cast a light over and go slower, you'd have to actually add more lights and reduce the amount of time those lights are triggered. So it, it, it gets tricky. It's not about necessarily um, slowing down the game time itself. To add a smoother look, you'd have to, you know, again, add more lights. Kind of in the same way the interpolation point adds uh, more vertices to itself, you know, in between each point. And that's just to sort of slow down when you, you know, modify the rate modifier. In this case, though, uh, this is a fairly detailed, obviously, as you can see, shadow cast, okay? So, uh, before I show you anything, though, I just want to point out that all of this is, is mined. Before triggering the next dispatcher, you'd have to, um, or before turning off the light, you'd have to trigger the next dispatcher. Why? Because of the way time is measured here. Uh, it still takes time to turn on the light, so that's why it's like this. That's what's like this, but you'd generally want a very small amount of time to, uh, in interval to, you know, trigger each light, because you don't want it to look choppy. So let's go ahead and look at how, what exactly this does, sort of like a ship moving over something or something like that, sort of for like cutscenes or anything of that sort. Okay, so one more time, let's just look at it from a different angle. <laughs> 